This is the kill fault. In the following series of videos, I'm going to describe the key features of this fault in detail. Let's start off at the toe of the fault, so in the most northerly exposure shown by this star on the image. I'm sitting on one of the limestone beds. We can see that it's light grey, fine grained rock. It has got some veins which are cross cutting it and uh, some more veining here, which we'll explore in um, another video. But what I really want to show here is how this limestone bed is fairly un, um, not very interesting, fine grained grey rock. And as we go into the fault zone, it suddenly becomes extremely deformed. So, we have a variety of different textures and fault material in here. Right in the guts of the fault now, so right in the fault core, and we can see that there's a variety of different rocks. The shale at the edges here is very deformed and squashed, but it's almost forming a kind of wavy planar fabric. We've then got blocks of the limestone, which are almost unrecognisable because they're completely, um, they're very much deformed and they're completely covered in veins. So they've been um, cut, cross cut by all of these veins. So we can see we've got these white minerals which are forming some veins which are kind of folding all over the place. They don't seem to have much order. Some of them are cross cutting kind of perpendicular 90 degrees to the dominant planar fabric, which is, you can see in these layers down here, you can see it as we move up through the fault zone, we've got this sort of dominant planar fabric. And we can see in places that we've got silicon fibers developed on that planar fabric. So we've got evidence that we've had movement on these surfaces. Moving up in the fault, we're going to look at those silicon fibres in more detail. Okay, I'm looking again at the fault surface here. So we've got one of the shale beds that's coming through and then it's been cut by this extremely sharp surface. And it is coated in a layer of a white mineral, which is also forming silicon fibres on the surface here and this fault surface is extremely uh, flat we can feel there are grooves we can tell that the rocks have been moving up and down on this surface I've measured this and it's striking about one two zero so east southeast west um, northwest and it is dipping about 40 degrees it's dipping towards the north these silicon fibres, the grooves and the, and the fibres of the white mineral which have grown on here, are um, they're plunging pretty much down dip. So they're plunging about 32 degrees to 350, 350. So they're plunging pretty much down dip to the north. Another interesting feature uh, with this fault surface are these pretty fine surfaces that are going down into the shale so they're they've got a very thin white sort of layer within them and there's two parallel here now veins are dilational features so they're showing that we've had opening up in this direction so the fact that we've got silicon fibers on this surface and it's about 40 dipping about 40 degrees we can see that we've had opening all of these veins opening in this direction. So that shows us that we've had the rocks pulling apart in this way. That's consistent with a normal fault, with the rocks moving down, opening up, extending, and pulling apart these little um, sort of subsidiary sort of uh, surfaces as they open. You can also see that as we move away from this, um, this surface, we've got lots and lots of veins within the fault damage zone. This is very similar to um, behind me, you can see there's a lot more of this. The veins are concentrated in little lenses of limestone and the limestone is much stronger within the fault. The, the shale is kind of, it's 
being foliated, it's being sort of squidged around, whereas the limestone is acting much more as a solid block and it's breaking and being um, filled up with all of these veins. Now let's go further up in the fault zone in order to describe the fault architecture. We've got another nice close up of the fault core and the damage zone around it. So the fault core itself is forming a nice thin layer of calcite and the silicon fibres, you can't, I can feel them on this surface. Um, there's some material which quite possibly is fault gouge within here as well. Then as we come out from this very core of the fault, so remember this is one of these um, east, southeast, west, northwest striking faults. See that there are veins developed in this little block of limestone. So these veins are opening up their extensional features and this is consistent with a normal fault. So we've had normal sense movement on this fault which has formed these veins. As we move away from the fault core, we get into a, the shale above. We can see lamination, this is basically bedding in the shale, which is coming down at an angle into the fault zone. But what is interesting is we've also got a number of fractures, which I'm just gonna sort of explain to you now. We've got a fracture that comes through, it's almost, it's pretty much parallel with these veins that are sort of perpendicular to the main fault plane. But the fracture sort of goes up away from the fault surface and it continues to go up through these shales and then it hits a limestone bed. And where it hits the limestone bed, it turns into a little dilational vein. And I can see from here, there's some big calcite crystals in that vein. And this is a lovely example showing you an antithetic structure. So the, this is dipping the opposite direction to the main fault. The main fault is dipping to the north. This fracture is dipping to the south, but it's formed due to extension as this normal fault has developed. And we can see that in the limestone because the limestone is stronger. So the limestone preserves that little pull apart feature, which is full of calcite and it shows that this is extensional deformation that's happening here. Now let's look at the limestone and the shale and how they are interacting along the fault. Just come slightly further up in the fault zone and I'm sitting on one of these distinctive limestone beds. What is interesting is here is what happens to the limestone as we approach the fault itself. So, you can see we've got some um, veins which are opening up, showing that we've had this bed extending. And then we've got a shale unit, which I'm actually sort of sitting on the base of that. Shale over the top. And the shale sort of bends around and comes actually over the top. It's, being, it's wrapping around this limestone. So the shale just right here. So we've got shale all the way around. This is a really nice example of where we've got the shale is much weaker than the limestone. So as this fault has developed, the shale has been much more malleable. It's been, it's acted more as a, what we might say, kind of a ductile material. It's forming a nice fabric within this fault. And as it's so much weaker, it's being dragged into the fault and it's actually sealing this limestone. So this is what we would call as a sort of fault seal fabric. And why that's important is because if you imagine that we had some kind of um, fluid in this limestone, because limestone is much more porous than the shale, so maybe oil and gas, if we had the shale being pulled over like this, it would stop that oil and gas escaping from this limestone unit.